everyone, I'm Tony Lontis and this is the Everyday Business Show. I'm going to do it to the best of my ability because if I fail, that means I fail for my entire female nation, I call it. <laughs> Is that possible? That was the question for myself. And it is absolutely possible. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Everyday Business Show. I'm your host, Tony Lontis, and today we have our wonderful guest returning for the third in a series of three shows, Dr. James Fisher. But before I introduce you to the go to the guest today, just a quick reminder, if you're watching this live on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch or Twitter, please don't forget to like, comment, connect with us, subscribe. We love the way that you value our shows, that you support us and comment on our shows each and every week it is greatly appreciated and a reminder too if you've missed any of the previous shows you can catch up on binge networks usa hero go zondra tv paz etc just to name a few now, each and every week, we do an, our, our own important contribution to the acknowledgement of our Indigenous community in Australia. And so today, I want to respectfully acknowledge the people of the Yugamba language region on the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia, and pay my respects to the Elders past present and emerging and all Torres Strait and Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander rather, and Aboriginal people watching or listening here today. Thank you for joining us. Now, this series of shows is called Light and the Public Good. And Dr. James Fisher is the Executive Director of Zoology Lighting Institute. Now, this amazing institute is a not-for-profit dedicated to supporting the sciences of light and life through arts for animal welfare and wildlife conservation. Natural light is a crucial foundation for all life on this planet. And only scientific investigation can make evident the necessary relationships for ecological well-being. And that includes us as humans. ZLI encompasses four businesses, endowment opportunities, animal welfare monitoring franchises, animal welfare design and education, and it pursues idea, inclusion, diversity, engagement and access programming. And so I'm delighted that I get to speak to Dr. James again today. We've got a great show lined up for you all. So welcome back, James. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's really a pleasure. <laughs> it's been wonderful to talk to you. I've learned so much more. I, obviously, I'm an animal lover by essence, um, but to learn more about the interaction of the animal kingdom and light has been fascinating. And today I wanted to quickly recap um, some of the ways that people can work with ZLI because we're going to go into the third um, and fourth ways in quite a lot of detail. But briefly, James, can you explain what the ZLI endowments, what does that mean? How does that work? Why is it important? Well, uh, you know, the endowments are really our primary purpose for being. Um, yeah. The idea is that we want to uh, support photobiology research so photobiology, again, you know, the relation of, yes. of light to, to living things. Mm -hmm. um, and what the endowments do is they actually provide the resources uh, that people can pursue their studies. That, that's really the main goal. Yeah. Uh, but it's also there to coordinate research. Uh, th there's wonderful research out there already. 
you know, there, there's lots of really good and interesting uh, mm. work being done, but it's kind of sequestered and it's really difficult sometimes for an animal care specialist or a uh, an to architect, find a developer, to find it, to understand uh -huh. it. So what the endowments are, it's really an effort to coordinate uh, the sciences of light and life. You know, they're mm. so important that the endowments are there to you know, allow companies to support them and to get involved. And, yeah. um, you know, and we can show like really clear relationships between so many different kinds of work mm -hmm. uh, and, and this research. So the endowments are really there to provide CSR opportunities, uh, but to do it all with that idea of really uh, advocating and supporting, meaningfully supporting uh, the sciences of light and life. So, yeah. uh, and, you know, so that, that's, that, that's really what the endowments are about, you know, and we do it at a number of levels. Uh, you know, we are, we don't have one yet, but we're looking, you know, to get funding for, for labs, uh, sort of the big, oh, big ticket item. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and with that, you know, it, it would be so helpful to coordinate, you know, biophysics work, biochemistry work mm -hmm. uh, within a, a network uh, of labs. The second level would be professorships. So mm -hmm. existing programs, you know, we have a number of like wonderful professors on our yes. board. The, the idea there is to support uh, photobiology research in uh, existing top end institutions. So, mm -hmm. if, for example, if somebody was an alumni of Cambridge or, you know, something like I pick Cambridge because they're so yeah. good at the sciences, um, if they wanted to support photobiology, or a ZLI endowment mm. at Cambridge, mm. we could be the vehicle for that. And it's important, I think, you know, to do it through a group like us, and I'll say us, because what we, we, we coordinate well, and show why it's so important. And I was going to say, ahead. James, ZLI is pretty um, unique in this yeah. space. Yeah, I don't think we have competition. I, I would love it. I was just going to say, <laughs> but we don't. I don't think that there's anyone other than ZLI that is doing this important work at the moment, which is why... It's we're talking and trying to get people aware yeah. that this is important. That, that, that's right. I think, you know, part of it is conceptual. Um, you know, there's so much good work done, say, like in Japan, right? Mm -hmm. And so much good work done in China and so much good work done in Europe and the Americas. And But um, it's not it's not presented that way. Usually when someone has a wonderful paper, it comes out as a one-off event yeah. in the news yeah. uh, and, and that'll get spread. Yeah. What we're really looking to do is to create that network mm. uh, that, and when I say it's a conceptual issue, it's difficult to remember what light is sometimes. Right? Yeah. It, you know, we, we talk about it as electromagnetic radiation mm. and that's it. You mm. know, that, that's the be all end all. Uh, for us, you know, looking at that physical reality of light, you know, and 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 how that interacts with living systems. Now we we can you know show the, the different ways that that is important, um, but it's very difficult sometimes to think of light as electromagnetic radiation, right? It's yeah. usually something that's sort of you'll, you'll hear that like particle wave duality, right? As if it's mm -hmm. little balls, you know, yes. like hitting us all the time. Yes, and it's not right, and and that yeah. doesn't allow us to think about how important it is. Mm -hmm. So, so our goal with this endowment, uh, uh, the endowments yes. is to really create a structure that's easy to get. Um, I, you know, I mentioned the high end, um, mm -hmm. uh, opportunities yes. in the labs and the professorships, yes. but then there are postdocs that we host ourselves, uh, oh, much wow. less. So, you know, and that way we can sponsor research in an ongoing basis through the Institute as an entity right yeah um and then something we've done from our very beginning are grants in aid of research yes. so if someone has a um, uh, a design project or an mm -hmm. animal care project in a zoo yes. or aquarium or mm -hmm. or in a lab you know uh, uh, uh wherever there are animals sports you know there's so many yes. different areas pet pets yes what we would do is provide grant money to aid that research and sometimes it comes in the form of monitoring equipment uh, sometimes it might come in the form of other you know material support but those are smaller awards you know mm -hmm. and we did that so we could reach more people mm -hmm. you know with with a, a lab you know a lab is expensive you know to set yeah. something like that we're talking millions of us dollars yes but but for um a a student 
right? You know, we, we've sponsored a uh, high school. Uh, so high school in the States, it's uh, teenage years. Yes. You yes. know, the, the uh, you know, for them to do their work, whether it's yeah. in the sciences directly, the yes. care, or even design, you know, even on the design side with fashion or architecture, mm. thinking of what cruelty-free design is, you know, yeah. um, that, you know, we may be talking $500 or, yes. you know, $1,000 or 5000 Amazing. But those smaller amounts go so much further. Yes. Uh, yes. You know, so it, we have to really look at context too. And so, yeah. but the, the endowments, it has that sort of four-tiered structure, the labs, the professorships, the um, uh, the postdocs, and then these smaller grants mm. as a student grants uh, or animal keeper grants because mm. keepers make virtually no money when they work. Yeah, in and, they, yeah. and they need to, you know, they yes. need that support. Yeah. So, um, so we're here for that. That's what the endowments are. So, and, and again, and they're always targeted. And I know we're going to talk about like campaigns uh, next. And, I know, you know that's our next. Vehicles. That was the one that I was right. looking forward to talking to. Yeah, so sure. endowments are essentially um, buckets, big or small, of money that further mm. the research and understanding of the interaction between light and our world, essentially. And That's right. they're important because of all the things that we're beginning to understand about the impacts of artificial light mm -hmm. on the animal kingdom in particular, but even the impacts on humanity in terms of sleep and mental health, etc. Mm -hmm. Now, the second part that ZLI um, works with in globally are uh, the campaign so i'd love you james to talk lots about how these work what they are and how others can be involved because there's a whole heap of really exciting campaigns that you guys work on so tell us about that james oh absolutely well with Z with zli uh you know it, it's a complicated subject you know photobiology yes. even like the, the framework seems simple to me now because i've been going over it some for so many years mm. but you know talking about photophysiology sensory ecology activity partitioning or we used to call it activity part now it's integrative biology but you know it, it, it's big complicated words, and, but it's essentially uh, big, right light interactions with it's, animals and that's humans. right it, and you know it's, it was always very difficult uh, describing the value of that, you know, so even though it seems like self-evident, you know, the world is physical and, you know, physical uh, parameters, you know, the, the physical parameter light, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it has uh, uh, consequences, you know, if you change it. Mm -hmm. um, but with the campaigns, those were really efforts to reach people and to clarify the importance of the work. And we, wow. you know, these can vary every couple of years. We can update them and add mm -hmm. things or take things away if we don't yes. like them, you know. But right now we have six. Yes. Uh, there's one called a beached, a beached campaign that features whales. And, oh. and our initial approach was to say, okay, here's, you know, here's the name of the campaign. And then here's the species we're going to, or, or animal yes. type we're going to focus on in that campaign. And then we have an issue that we deal with uh, that's associated with that. So, you know, right now there, there's beached, which deals with whales and dolphins uh, and specifically focused on how uh, accommodating their visual systems can be you James, know, to function at the surface, function below. So, I'm sorry. No, I'm curious now in talking about whales beaching, is there a light connection between why they beach or is that the current thought well no i'm gonna say no okay uh, good. because and i realized you know that the title of the campaign mm -hmm. is, a, is a little like guiding and it shouldn't yes. be i i think what what beached was really referring to in that title was the idea that um you had uh uh, uh, uh a, a challenge Right. Mm -hmm. So beached, you know, if uh, which was a dead end solution, uh, yeah. you know, a, a dead end problem that we needed to fix. Yes. With beached, it focuses on whales, yes. but its topic, uh, in terms of its general cultural topic, and, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm going to describe that third yes. category. Yes. The cultural topic is dealing with anti Asian hate. Yeah. That this was a big problem in the sciences, and it's a big problem. Uh, specifically around whales and dolphins mm -hmm. um, for two reasons. There's the, the sort of low hanging fruit is talking about whaling in Japan and, you know, mm -hmm. the extension and the uh, qualification of that over all of 
science in Japan, you know, in station Japanese science mm -hmm. in the general public eye, it was a huge problem. Yes. Um, I, I couldn't look at a Hollywood movie that had a Japanese researcher and a whale without teasing out these obviously racist challenges. Ah. It's actually tied into the Chinese fisheries and the history of Chinese fisheries in California. Mm -hmm. You know, th there's a, a long history of discrimination uh, that needs yes. to be overcome. So the beach campaign, you know, we took that um, all all of this, but the 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 thematic connections were okay. Let's look at the the extreme uh, uh, flexibility of cetacean eyes. Use that to talk about the necessity of really looking at the science and separating out whatever position policies may come or reactions to you know issues in the world but really just focusing on good work and supporting people who do it mm -hmm. and then advocating for work in the sciences. So the beached campaign, it, you know, I always start with that one because I think it's the most important, uh, you know, to get that. I, I mean, we talk about inclusion, diversity, engagement, and access mm -hmm. in the animal welfare space, these conversations, it, it, it is the most glaring challenge to overcome before we can talk about caring for an animal you have to look at we human animals mm. and get to that point where you can care for something that isn't what's perceived as us right mm. um and that may mean that you know th there uh, i'm not an advocate for whaling i have to say this mm. and because yes. the sense the subject is so sensitive yes. that being said someone might be right yeah. and as an animal welfare charity our goal is to mitigate mm. suffering in these contexts. Mm. It's not to like eliminate every wrong in the world that we imagine, right? Yeah. So we we might talk about well, if if and the good example with beached is mm. if there are um, dolphins mm. uh, in aquaria in, yes. in Japan and China. In fact, it's on yes. the rise, right? It's been made illegal in Europe and, and uh, yes. in, in many parts of Europe and in Canada, yes. right? Yes. The, the the challenge though is that that's a very Western perspective, mm. but and and there's no political power to change that situation in China and Japan. None, absolutely none, right? Wow. And nor should there be, yeah. right? So what I would say coming into this and with ZLI, you know. It, uh, you know, and, and different people within Zelda have different perspectives on all this. Yes, yes. But, and, and I want to be clear to say that because, you know, even though I represent the organization, I want to make sure that, you know, Everyone we're inclusive. Everyone has perspectives, well, yes. Right? Uh -huh. right. Those dolphins and, uh, uh, the, you know, or, or, mm -hmm. and orcas, not really quite whale, you know, but, but orca, yeah. dolphin, yes. you know, porpoises, mm. if they're in a condition in an aquarium, how do we reduce suffering in that condition? You know, or how do we translate that into understanding the better so we can reduce suffering in the wild, mm. right? Now, it's not saying that we're going to be able to prevent every death, every every no. challenge, right? But we want to focus James, on how do we reduce that suffering, yeah. The issue so. with zoos is their powerful education mm. and awareness yeah. for the general public. So if you actually take the animals out of zoos, mm. we then mm. have the issue of public understanding, public empathy around the That's animal right. kingdom. So it's kind of a dual, it's a fine line. And if a lot of juggling. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but we can always do it better in terms of the animals That's in right. captivity. Um, and no, mm. I, you know, all animals should be free and in the wild. But yeah. conversely, we need to make sure that the general public have awareness of the interaction with animals, et cetera, et cetera. So you're correct. Right. It's such a, a fine line. Well, and we have to build empathy yes um, and that starts you can't have empathy in a message of hate correct it doesn't work it, it doesn't. And I, i'm going to give a very this is probably going to be a slightly controversial sort of thing to say um it, uh, chinese medicine right yes. is a bugaboo in in western zoos right mm. you will always see that as an evil that's influencing conservation pressures mm. right and in many respects that's you know it's legitimate to think okay this is what's happening 
But on the other side, one of the arguments for wildlife conservation mm. is to extract natural resources from the rainforest and, and you know, for pharmaceutical research and health, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and so th there's, but because of the anti-Asian hate, right? Yeah. It's very easy to target Chinese medicine as the evil, right? Yeah. As opposed I've actually to thinking, not well, thought about how does this it that work? Way, it's not, it's a very challenging issue. That's why I say, mm. um, I there aren't very many groups uh, raising this issue mm -hmm. um, because it's, you know, we love animals. We, we yeah. want to mitigate yes, suffering in the animals. Yes. Yes. But we can't do that if we're focused on hating Correct. someone who's doing something we yes. don't like. Yes. Right? Yes. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a, it's a poacher theme mm. that comes up in wildlife conservation mm. circles. Mm. Now, for our part, and again, this is kind of a long explanation of the beach no, campaign. No, no, that's okay. But, um, you know, for our part, we're looking at an issue with light pollution that no one else is. Yeah. Right? And we see the suffering that the light pollution causes in a mm. very real way. Mm. We're talking about mental capacity. Yes. We're talking nutrition. We're talking yes. reproductive and developmental biology. Mm. We're talking behaviors mm. and behavioral potential. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, even like environmental qualities always read back into that. Mm. Um, so we're, we're looking in this space that no one's looking at. That's right. And we don't have, we don't want to make an enemy. You, you know, if I can of use anyone. that word, like that old Carl Schmitt yeah. politics yeah. kind of a thing that's so prominent now. Yeah. It's a Nazi politician, Carl Schmitt, right? Yeah. Um, you know, what, 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 we, we, what we want to do is move past that yes. and get to the point where we're looking at, well, what can we do in this situation? Mm. And our answer comes through in that Zala, those franchises, the idea yes. that we're going to monitor suffering yes. and we're going to say, look, this is what we can fix. This is what we can't. Yeah. And this is how we move forward. Yeah. Um, you know, and because the world is a real place. Yeah, uh, and that's right. we want to always come back to that, that mm. here in the now. Mm. So anyway, so our other campaigns, you know, they're, they're not yes. quite as difficult and challenging as beached. Beached is difficult. Yes. Because we take the most iconic, we... lovable animal. Yes. And we say, well, sometimes, you know, life suffers. Yeah. How do we get to that better place? Yeah. Right. So, you know, paranoia, that, that's kind of the oh, second. I know. Right? I love you know? this one. <laughs> you know, Bear Not obviously focuses on bears yes. and it looks at mental health issues. Because yes. again, you know, we have the mental capacity idea, you know, of mm. looking at the environment and how people could, or, <laughs> how animals can engage with it, right? You know, mm. including people, mm. um, you know, depending on that full natural light levels and, and qualities. Yeah. And, yeah. But then there's also the hormone aspects of it, the, those endocrine relations. Yes. If you think of light in that electromagnetic radiation mm. as being the first hormone through the eye, through mm. the light sensitive ganglion cells into mm. the endocrine system, um, that increases, you know, when there's a limitation of that natural cycling, you induce anxiety, you induce uh, you know, mental challenges, an incapacity to function to the fullest, mm. if I can put it that way. Yeah. And so paranoia it looks at those environmental factors in mental health. Mm. If you ever seen a bear pace, stereotypes, yes. you know, bear yes. behaviors. Yes. Um, you know, I won't go on a limb and say, okay, that's all light related because it's not. There's a history mm. to that. Those mm. animals mm. that you know, this behavior is induced in that mental yeah. system yeah. that's driving it. Yeah. But the light is a big part of it. Um, mm. I, I won't. Also, I won't say it's. I won't say it's a total part, and I won't say mm. it's a non-issue. Mm. It's a. It's a major part of it. So that that was kind of the connection. Yeah. Um, but there also, on the a more human side, and this comes out in the the related anime that we're working on. on this, yeah, yeah. You know, the, there is a um, uh, there, there's a fear factor involved too, in that how do you live with top predators? Yeah. You know, there's an anxiety that we talk about in the bear, mm. but then there's that anxiety of the bear. Us. <laughs> it, uh, us. Right. Like, how do, how do we Is it deal eat me? <laughs> with these? Right. Right. And how do we respond? Because mm. if we respond out of anxiety, mm. right, all of a yeah. sudden you, you end up with issues like there are no wolves in the West yes. because people are afraid of wolves or yeah. in Europe, you yes. know, where they're eliminated because there's a fear because there wasn't an effort. It was laziness. There's not an effort yeah. to learn how do you live with this other animal. How do you live with these so, animals? Because there is a right. way, James. Right. Let's face it. There yeah. are ways and means around yeah. all of these uh, problems. We just 
tend to sometimes as humans take the easy yeah. option, um, which is not always the best one, is it? That That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, so paranoia, it has that dual anxiety in the animal induced by the restrictions on, on, on natural light. But then it also has this, uh, you know, how do you live with predators? How do you live with a natural world? How do you get over it? Because one of the big issues with, and I will say, in fact, I will say the issue with mm -hmm. light pollution is mm -hmm. anxiety. It, it's the anxiety that drives all of it, right? Yes. That idea that you give a child a nightlight. Right, yeah. it's a good way That's to think about this. Fear and There's anxiety. No reason for it. That's exactly It's inducing right. the fear. Yes. Or in, in in Japan, you know, if you look at sort of the history of ghosts and and yeah. spirit, I know there aren't really yeah. ghosts, but like the spirits, though, and yes. they come from the light. So something like uh, Oiwa, you know, the famous mm -hmm. ghost, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the the wronged mm -hmm. wife, right? Yeah. You know, her ghost comes from the lamp, right? Oh, it's really yeah. a smart way to think about it. Yes. Because it's that light that induces, it creates the dark that makes that fear of that kind of um unwillingness to see yeah if you don't have lamps in right your eyes adjust mm -hmm. and you can explore your vision yeah. right the lamp comes in you can't see the dark no, parts like a that's right. like a, a deer in headlights is kind yes. of the phrase you know yes. if a, a car comes down a dark road and you're blinded you're blinded because your eyes are adjusting to that yeah. high level of light but it means you can't see anything else that you could normally see yeah so anyway you know, the um the, 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 there's a lot in all of yes that. so but like you know and the, there are other campaigns too that we could we i just talk just about, the but... only other one that i really wanted to touch on because i just love it is the insect apocalypse um campaign right. yeah. which <laughs> is related to um food security i just mm. just quickly james because food sure. security is going to be a focus for many across the globe um in in years to come as our insect right. population is decimated so let's just quickly explore the insect apocalypse sure. campaign please sure absolutely well as you said you know it focuses on insects and its theme is food security mm. uh, and here again it also has a dual purpose to it too but yes. the main one is that artificial lighting is a main country is a uh a top, we lose billions and billions of insects. It, it, and the artificial light is a huge cause of that. Mm. Um, and you know, it's one of those things. That when the first two papers that came out talking about declining insects numbers, mm. the, the two main ones, yeah. they didn't mention light pollution. Mm. So Avalon Owens of our group, Brett Seymour of our group, uh, they, they had several colleagues who forgive me, I, their names are, are yes. uh, escaping me right now because they're not really uh, part of yes. our, our narrow group. Um, uh, they, they produced the paper, and all the paper was was a gathering of existing research. Avalon uh -huh. pulled together over two hundred. You know, she has her own research, really good stuff that she works mm -hmm. on. But um, but she pulled together over two hundred papers mm -hmm. that made that connection. Um, but it's a familiar one. If you ever think of uh, moths to a flame, yeah, right? exactly. And if you think, well, where do those moths come from? Where uh -huh. do the insects come from, right? Uh -huh. Well, they came from a habitat, mm -hmm. right? If, they're, if they came from a habitat, they're not there anymore. Mm -hmm. And if they're not there, the entire food chain is mm -hmm. affected. So right. if uh, fish or frogs, you know, if they eat those particular insects or bats, mm -hmm. if they eat those insects, either they move or mm -hmm. if they can't, mm -hmm. they don't have it. Mm. And you lose the habitat quality. Yeah. So, so it's a, it's a vacuum effect, you know, just sucking insects yeah. out of where they should be. Yeah. And then you have the attendant problem of if they die over a street light and fall into a pavement, they're washed down into sewer system, whatever it might be. Um, oh, and all of a sudden, yeah. you have algae blooms, and you have yes. uh, you know, to, you know to concentrated toxins instead of soil, oh. right? And that, that's where it all comes back to. How do you replenish the soil? Mm. If you light the cities and you light mm. the sub suburbs and, and rural yeah. areas, if you light that, you're effectively um, degrading the soil mm -hmm. by taking out those biological components that constitute yeah. it. Yeah. So it's it's kind of a weird way to think about it, you know, to like manage death and all of this. Mm. But it's a but it's a big part of how the food chains work that recycling yeah. of organic material so insect apocalypse mm. it looks at the effect of light uh in insect lives mm. Mm. Uh, and there are other aspects of it too but but this is the main point mm. um 
it looks at that with the idea that you know you're losing pollinators but you're also losing soil yeah and the without attention to that vacuum effect food uh, security challenges become worse and that's enough yeah. you know right there for a yes, campaign absolutely uh, that's and, enough yeah you know, and, you know, I mentioned the other side of it, too, with food production, you know, we, we dabbled with entomophagy when we started. And, you know, that that, you know, is in terms of like supporting initiatives and whatnot. Mm. And but the idea on, on on that side is to think about food production in its industrial sense. Yes. How do you improve uh, agriculture mm. with regard to light? Mm. And sometimes that might be having, you know, isolate, you know, greenhouses that pump light in to like, you know, you know, produce, uh, you know, overly uh, productive plants. You mm -hmm. know, you can do that in context, but it's not a great long term solution if you lose everything else. Mm -hmm. You know, so if, for example, if you're lighting uh, fields uh, intensely, like uh, I'll say like yes. a tomato field, right? Yes, or, yes. Uh, 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 wheat field, something like mm. that. If you're lighting that intensely because you can induce a very unnatural growth in those plants, uh, you're also impacting the wild systems yes. that have an impact on that overall uh, sustainable viability. Mm. Mm. So it's kind of another side. So we we might, you know, people might want to talk about GMOs. They might, you know, and and, and yeah. get into like those kind of discussions, which mm. are great. You know, integrated pest management, you know, yeah. really important yeah. stuff. Yeah. For our part, we would look at light uh -huh. uh, within that context as yes. trying to find that balance mm -hmm. between um, uh, uh, an overtaxed system. You know that unfortunately does require overproduction in some senses. Yeah. With the idea of well, how do you balance that with natural mm -hmm. flows mm -hmm. of of growth and insects or seasonality? Mm -hmm. um, you know, seasonality is one of those things that again we we have this fondness for Japan because seasonality is so important. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, culturally uh, that you know. I mean, it used to be a you know twenty four month cycle, you know, and every month you had if something that you do, right? You know, yeah. and but it it still plays itself out now that you know, or or I'll take in in France, like in I went to school at the Architectural Association in London, mm -hmm. and we, you, you you wait for the the new wine, you know, in the fall, uh, yes. and you can't get it other times; it's not the same, right? Yeah. So you know it that idea of seasonality and enriching life and paying attention mm -hmm. to what the natural mm -hmm. world is doing. Mm -hmm. All of that fits an insect apocalypse. Yeah. It's you know, there's that there, there's that time element, you know, apocalypse, right? So yeah. if we talk about phenology, is the study of how time uh, and and life go go together, right? Mm -hmm. So insect apocalypse is kind of that way to you know that we can engage that subject of seasonality in a way that makes sense to people looking at what CLI is doing. Yeah. So you know if we talk about uh, you know time clocks, uh, yes. you know. A lot of people talk about biological clocks, and we we always say, yeah, it's light dependent. You know, it's a big part of it. Seasonality. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, um, insect apocalypse is kind of that way to bring all of this in, but it narrows down to those two very simple things. Insects are important from an animal welfare standpoint too. And you know, from we, a food we, we do stress that, and from a food perspective, yeah. so it's a way to bring that idea of food, yeah, uh, into that animal welfare space. Yeah. Now we don't talk about we're we we don't really uh, get into veganism or uh, mm. you know vegetarianism, you know, or we we don't really get into that mm. because we look at uh, that consumption of living things by the living as mm. part of this animal welfare suffering mandate yeah. how do we think through these things mm. you know, how do we think through food security yeah. in a way that makes global sense and it yeah. might mean that inhumane practices maybe they, they do need to go you know yeah. but it may also it might also be how do you manage the suffering in conditions that um necessitate yeah, uh, that degree of of of, of pain, you know. Yeah. So th there's a lot to it. Insect apocalypse is a good way lot. to do it because, the, uh, <laughs> right? A lot of people don't think about insect, and, and no. I don't know. Uh, and that's you should why, be really upset by this because he loves because, insects, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You have to think of even the insect, even the mm. fly, even mm. the pest. Yeah. Like you can't have agriculture without integrated pest management. It means yeah. that some animal insects, animals, suffer in mm. that. 
Mm-hmm. And so it's a question of managing and recognizing that uh, uh, animals are life, right? Yeah. Insects are part of that too. Yeah. So insect apocalypse you know, it has that uh, capacity to engage all of our components. Yeah. So sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about <laughs> No, no, that's fine. Like I say, this um, is why I'm here. <laughs> I, I, exactly, exactly. <laughs> the third part that ZLI um, does their work is around films. So James, mm. talk us through this concept in terms of, yeah. and it is really about public education, isn't it? It is. It is. Um, a few years ago, uh, Emily Driscoll, who was a, a director, um, approached us from Bonsai Films. She said, look, why don't you make documentaries? That could be your legacy. Mm. I said, yeah, I'm not really interested in legacy. I just want to do my work, right? But 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 she was right. Um, we made a, a wonderful documentary uh, with her. Um, it was live action. We did it. Yeah. Uh, it's bilingual. Uh, we filmed in Japan. We filmed in the U.S. Right? Uh, and uh, it, it did really well. It was a lot of film festivals, uh, you know, could be really proud of it. In fact, it was featured yeah. uh, as an example of Japanese cinema oh, at, at, uh, yes. at the National Museum. Yes. It yes. did really, really well. Yeah. But it had that bilingual, the idea was photo diversity. The idea yeah. we were going to represent people's interests yeah. and perspectives in their own languages. So, you know, that, that, that was the idea. It did wonderful in the film world. Right? Uh-huh. But that being said, that's not really enough. Yeah. Uh, it, it was great, but it's our starting point. We started looking at, at markets mm. and how people are engaged and mm. what they'll act on. The behavior change was really key for us. Yeah. We preached to the choir with this. Yeah. I don't know how many people actually turned off their lights because of that film. Oh. I hope they did. Yeah. But I don't, but I, I have a sneaking suspicion, not too many. <laughs> so... At the end of the day, right. And again, wonderful film, as as good a documentary as I could ever have wanted, right, out of all of this. Um, in any event, we started looking at ways that in uh, uh, people would change their behaviors based yes. in media, right? Yes. And there's some good, there's some bad. Yeah. The best was in anime. We looked at uh, comic cons, yes. cause uh, you know, cosplay events. Yes. Watching people change their entire lives around characters mm. so we said well and characters were, were the key mm. uh we started looking at different anime and you know what people were relating to it was the characters mm. and the subjects tended to be uh subjects that you don't really find you didn't really find it in in more mainstream american media right they were really personal intimate very japanese and that's why i say yes. anime and not just yes. animation yes in that you you had these what seemed to be for a, a, a new yorker you know it seemed to be these exaggerated emotions on screen but what they were doing uh what the films were doing the series were doing was recognizing people's challenges in ways that people could say that's me i'm going through that i see that so we we saw that and we said well uh, then we looked at the finances mm-hmm. after that. You know, the yes. first attraction was just that. The yes. character-driven anime were inducing behavior change in yeah. subjects that we felt affinity for. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of environmentally sensitive anime, mm-hmm. even when they're in fantastic worlds and lots of bloodshed yeah. and all sorts of yes. things. They're the, the, the very um, uh, uh, realist mm-hmm. in the way that they look at environmental problems that people tend to want to put a good face on in other places mm-hmm. uh, in, in you know in, in the documentary world i don't know mm-hmm. a single documentary that doesn't end with the idea that there's hope go get hope right yeah. you don't have that in anime right yeah. because people can people are smart you know yeah. i've always said this you know people are yeah. really smart and they yes. know when there's a real problem yeah so the second aspect after we looked at that the character driven realist perspectives that we were getting out of anime we would uh, then look at the finances and anime make uh, anime tend to make a lot of money, uh, and uh-huh. in part, that's because um, uh, uh, it, it's because they can be so popular and people do dive in. Mm-hmm. Uh, in part, it was because there was an issue with the studios not really getting paid enough, you know, yeah. at, to make these yes. the money going to other sources. Yes. Um, but there was also that um, a lasting power of anime. Yeah. So if I were to go into, uh, say, like a museum in, in Japan, I can I can find 
or uh, even uh, say like in Los Angeles, mm. you know, numerous <laughs> shops that will have anime on DVD, right? It's still DVD uh, and Blu-ray. Yeah, Barnes yeah. and Nobles will carry yes. it to just you yes. give them a plug, right? Yes. But they'll, they'll, they'll carry um, uh, anime is very. I mean, if, Very if I look behind me here, I put yes. these up here on purpose, right? They're these like uh, little huh. anime figurines. Yes. Now, I'm not really a collector, actually. It, it, it's not my thing. But I, I do have these to recognize that um, people value this work as a form of art. And yes. financially, what that means is that like an anime production may not do well in the opening weekend. Right. Mm. It, 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 and, and typically they don't. They don't mm. drive huge box office numbers like, say, a mm. Marvel movie you watch or, yeah. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But what they do is create this lasting value. So something like Spirited Away here, mm. it made um, over 300 million U.S. dollars equivalent yeah. over the course of its history. Mm. Whereas I think initial box office maybe it might have covered the cost of the film maybe twice that yes but but it made those huge numbers afterwards uh -huh. now we're a charity we're looking at lasting value because we know yes. that our our issue science wildlife yes. even empathy through animal welfare diversity it yes. takes time mm -hmm. we you know we would we would love sort of like a lottery win you know of having yeah, you know like you know a hundred million dollars you... come in yeah but that that, that would be great but what we're really looking for is that long-term viability of financial streams that can be managed responsibly. Mm. That's where the anime series comes from. Ah, okay. That, that's why we got in, right? We're really looking at this yeah, long-term project. Of, yes, yes. So that has we set up reoccurring, reoccurring yeah. revenue combined with the education of the planet. Um, amazing that, That's right. The education idea. part and the community building. You know, the community building is key. So we, we stick with Susan Aquariums no matter what. We, we, yeah. we, 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 we made our bed. We're sticking with them. And, but the reason, though, is those are the community centers to yeah. talk about wildlife issues, animal-related issues. They always will be. They're mm -hmm. not going anywhere. For yeah. I know a lot of people want to, you know, they say, oh, they're cruel, shut them down. We, we don't believe in any of that, actually. No. But we do, we do believe that the, this is a, a typical a kind of an institution, even though it's modern, yeah, it's something that you always you have always had exotic animals kept by local populations, yes. whether those exotics are like actually locally, physically, mm. you've always had that, yeah. always had that. It's not yeah. going anywhere. Yeah. The, with the zoos and aquariums, they tend to be like a credit. So anyway, so I'm, I'm getting off topic yeah. with the anime subject that we yes. have, the anime films that we yes. have. We, we link them to our campaigns. Mm. So we said, look, you know, with Beached, okay, Afterlife of Wales, anti-racist, there's a story we can tell here. Correct. Paranoia. There's a story around baseball. Carlos yes. Nobel in, yes. uh, in uh, you know, Japan, We because of him, actually. We, yes. we want to build up this baseball-themed anime around mm. bears, too. It's like yes. bears and baseball. It has its... Uh, oh, uh, works, uh, it's, called it? fear, yeah. it's called Fear of Faith. It's actually a really yeah. good story. I, I like that one. Yeah. Um, and each of them... So, uh, insect apocalypse there's one yeah. called night bloomers that yeah. you know, it's an ethiopian character uh that that drives that one mm. uh, save a billion birds uh yes. you know our uh, so that was sort of our premiere campaign years ago yeah. that one has a film called a film series called the yeah. green year yeah. uh that one features uh actually the little boy from yeah. uh to kill a mockingbird that yeah. has no story and no voice in that mm. classic book we give him a voice and we, we tell his story as an adult and what he's yeah. going through as a, yeah. uh, uh, so anyway, but each of these anime productions, we were developing them as 21 episode anime again. Mm. So we can, we, we really paid attention to how anime works. Yes. Uh, the business of it works yes. so that each episode releases as an event yes. that can be featured locally. Yes. And then it's released as a streamer and then it's released yes. uh, as a collectible yes. uh, and so that there are these constant releases that you know people love and yeah. you know we have these six campaigns so six times 21 you know we yeah, uh, they're really geared towards building these slowly developing and by slowly i mean within the next 10 years we want to have all of these out mm. um uh you know series that mm. focuses on some science, animal welfare, wildlife conservation yeah. theme yeah. that has to be very character driven. 
-hmm. but then also very realist yeah. in its approach. Yeah. So it may be uncomfortable for new watchers. Yeah. I, you know, in, in America, we, you know, we have a lot of parents will say, yeah, my kid watches anime. I haven't watched it. Right. You, yeah. you hear that an awful lot. Right. Yeah. They, they would be shocked if they did yeah. because the, the themes are very um, raw. Yes. You know, and I, th I think they tend to be healthier. Yeah. Then what you get from um, traditional, you know, let, let's say traditional like ne Hollywood. network media, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. you know, I, I think they, they tend to be much healthier, yeah. despite the shock value yeah. in the first time. Not all of them, right? There's this, 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 a lot of let's just say less than admirable content that can come out, mm -hmm. but it, it but it really depends on uh, the studios, and there's some really wonderful studios out there, yeah. uh, you know, and and, and the you know the authors that they pull out and what yeah. they want to show yeah uh and so anyway so that's what our, our anime are about and you know we're at this point we're looking for development you know to meet our development budgets and funding uh, we're looking for is the main thing isn't it funding funding is always the main thing yeah it always James, is funding uh, and investment know, we, is incredibly important i think we, we've done so much with zli mm. uh, on a shoestring yeah you know, the content that's there virtually for free let's yeah. just say that you know yeah. that we, we 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 created this um with uh no we, we love the support that we've gotten from the different stakeholders like so ibm yeah. has given some yes. money in, and johnson yes. johnson gave a little money in and our board members give money in yeah you know, I, i'll say even like myself I, i've given a lot of money in, yes. you know? but the idea though is that we have this great content mm. so we know we can take a dollar and, yeah. and, 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 and make, and make a thousand out of it. Yes. Uh, and so, you know, with our program, in terms of value, much more, because again, nobody's paying attention to any of the yeah. lighting issues and the light yeah. issues. So, but what we really are looking at now, I, I always tell uh, anybody involved with us that, look, we want to fund the films, mm. you know, and, and to do that with initiatives, mm. uh, sort of like with Carlos, like the, you yes. know, we want to get these baseball camps started. Yeah. So anti, anti, anti bullying baseball camps yeah. the, with Barry and Noya, sort yeah. of the, the translatable action item is anti bullying. Yeah. Uh, NHK is by far the best television studio production house in the world by far. Mm. It's not even close in our minds. Right. Mm. And, you know, they have anti-bullying campaigns and we're mm. sensitive to that. Mm. And if we're talking about mental health and anxiety, yeah. well, we're going to, we're going to deal with anti-bullying campaigns too. And, yeah. you know, so Carlos, the idea is to integrate bullying into sports and yes. anti-bullying into sports because yes. it's necessary. Absolutely. Uh, and so, you know, so, so there's that kind of an yeah. initiative that goes along with the campaign and the other, so like with Save a Billion Birds, there's a biking for birds yeah. initiative that goes yeah. along with the green year film. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to put people on bikes. So give them nature Perfect. access, which yes. is another huge issue. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and, and have them uh, monitor collisions with windows. Yeah. Uh, again, a huge issue that none of I know, have. which I wasn't aware yeah. of until we had our conversation and, and you told me about the numbers of birds that are injured by flying into windows. I'm like, oh my goodness me. And then that yeah. links to the architecture, which is your background. James, mm. um, the, so you have the campaigns, you have the films. I can see how they link together. What's next? Um, You know, I think the next thing for us to do, we have an event coming up in San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, again, you know, fundraising dinner mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, that's, it's not quite on the web yet, but with okay. that, we, we, that'll be up soon. Okay, uh, there cool. we're just looking to get, you know, buy-in and, you know, take people. Uh, it's, it's, it's on a ship actually. It's, it's. Oh, on, James. A, wow. Uh, a ship in, in San, San Francisco. Oh, San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. We were, we were going to do, we, we want to do a series of whale watches around uh, the afterlife of whales too. Yeah. But for this one, the main fundraiser is just an elegant dinner on the ship. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that again, to combat anti-Asian hate, but also yes. to support, it can, uh, I'm sorry, combat anti-Asian hate by funding cetacean science. Yeah. So it, it's yes. pretty straightforward. I, I actually uh, love, the the inter I love the integration of topics and themes into the work that you do so it's not just about uh light humans and animals mm. it's about some other really important components that need combating 
i.e. anti-bullying, yeah. anti-Asian. I love that ZLI does that so well across all of their programs and I campaigns, et cetera. Um, James, I'm just conscious that we are quickly I running out of time yeah. and I actually really want to highlight again for those listeners and audience how they can work with ZLI because mm. you might think, oh, I can't do anything, but I'm telling you, the smallest many people mm. doing small things accomplishes great things. So, James, can you That's tell the right. audience how people can engage with the ally, how they can work with the ally, and how they can volunteer? Absolutely. Well, the easiest thing to do is obviously, you know, join us on social media and all of that. We, we don't have a huge presence uh, right now, but we're there. Yeah. Uh, and, but I think, you know, uh, what we're looking to do is actually create societies uh -huh. in Japan, in Japan in particular, and in yes. the UK, uh -huh. uh, gathering advocates that want mm -hmm. to explore the night, right? yes. um, that encourage the, the turning off of artificial light wherever yes. possible. Um, we are looking for people to screen their windows. Mm -hmm. So a very simple thing to do Um not just during migration season. Uh, uh, you know, there are a lot of lights out programs globally. Yeah. It's really a, a year round problem. It's just mm -hmm. when migration comes, there are more birds in the area. So yes. you use one. It's like yeah. one out of every 10 yeah. birds will fly in. So simply oh. screening the windows. Uh, you know, th there are a number of different things people can do, but simple screening yeah. uh, is a start. Um, yeah. Do it and then tell us about it. Yes. Post it, you know, yes. online to say, look, yeah. here's my community. I'm, I'm doing this, right? Yeah. Um, in terms of the the uh, the, the science side of things, mm -hmm. um, learning about it is very key. Education, you know, looking is education, key. and we'll we'll get there. You know, in terms mm -hmm. of our own like output, you know, with courses, things like that. But there's a mm -hmm. lot already out there. Yeah, looking at uh, the Fermi Labs, you know, the the physics mm -hmm. of light that comes mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. makes it really easy. You know, looking at um, uh, uh, thinking about the world in physical terms. Yes. This is the hardest thing, I think, for people to do. Yeah. If you're able to think of the world, uh, the, you know, the expression is in the here and now, but it means as a physical thing, mm -hmm. right? You know, that helps an awful lot mm -hmm. because all of a sudden, like the well-being is focused you can see not only what the impacts are, say, of, of light and cycles yeah. and levels. And so midnight yeah. becomes midnight again. Yeah. You know, you, you have that, but you're also able to focus on what may not be right and may need attention that mm -hmm. you want to say, um, you, you know, I, I can't see when that street light, when that car is coming because of those headlights. Yeah. Or I can't see the stars. Yes. Why can't I see the stars? Because there's right? too you much know, light. Because there's too much light. Yeah. And, and and so just recognizing that, that, you know, is a way to then start thinking, well, wait a minute. This light is preventing me from seeing stars. It's preventing mm. me from seeing those trees. Mm. I can't see motion as well. Mm. Uh, you know, I can I can think now as if I were in the middle of the day, but that's mm. kind of a fantasy. Mm -hmm. But then the other questions come as well, how is that affecting everything else? Yeah. Right? So that first focus on the physics of the here and now, right? Not not just the here and now, it's the physics of the here and now. Yeah. That that's that's just a, a mantra that uh, allows for people to understand that well being and light are connected very, very closely. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's a great starting point. Now, as far as helping ZLI, obviously we need donations, we need sponsors, we need people to come and yes. participate. Yes. And, you know, I'm I'm pretty accessible. I was just uh, going to say, I, James, you're yeah, actually I'm, I'm available to talk to people, to talk to groups. I, I do. To, yeah. you know, I mean, if it's a company, a I, I hope they would pay us. But, you know, yeah, no, I, I do it all the time. I, I, you can tell from my personality, maybe. I don't say no very often, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but, exactly. but that's that's because I know how valuable this is. Like, there's like a certain joke about it, too, that I'm mm. a bit of a pushover, right? <laughs> but but that being said, no, it's true. Like, you know, it's, uh, my uncle used to call him Joe Mush. He used to call my uncle <laughs> Joe Mush. He was like this Italian family in New York, right? But <laughs> but the idea, there is a lot about, of that about me. Yeah. But that being said, the reason why I can kind of 
put down the more harsher aspects of my personality is that I know how important this subject is and how little yeah. attention it's getting. Yeah. So like, you know, zoos would do this and I, I, for a while I would get upset about it. Zoos would come and say, look, you know, tell me how to light my, uh, uh, my parakeet, you know, or tell me how to light yeah. this. Mm -hmm. And I would say, well, lighting is not the issue. You want to monitor the light first. They mm -hmm. don't like that answer. Nobody likes that answer. Right? Yeah. But, but monitoring is, is really the first way to go. Yeah. The thing is, I, you know, for the longest time, I would say, okay, you know, uh, I'm just going to say that. I, I'll still continue to teach all the time. That's not Absolutely. changing. But for institutions, organizations, there it does have to be an understanding that this work is valuable enough to be Absolutely. funded at the highest level. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So whereas like with individuals, I'll always comfort and listen as best I can. Correct. But, but that being said with companies and organizations, we need that sponsorship so we can lend Definitely. Our, our largesse to their initiatives. And there's a huge value in that. There I is. always say this, whoever, whoever gets us wins, <laughs> you know, they don't Definitely. realize it yet. So Definitely. whoever gets those wins in terms of Definitely. sponsorships and whatnot. In, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so amazing. So we, we can be a little arrogant about it too. Yeah. So. And, and so you should. It's very valuable yeah. work. I, I, I'm, yeah. I must say we are incredibly grateful to have spent time with you, James, and I oh, look forward you. to uh, doing ongoing interviews um, from time to time because it's so important to highlight this issue across the globe. Um, Dr. James Fisher, it's an absolute pleasure to highlight the work that you do on the Everyday Business Show. We are delighted that you had time and made time to do this series of interviews. As I said, we will continue to make sure that we provide time for you to talk about this important subject and I look forward to um, things that we can do together in the future. In the meantime, I encourage the audience, jump on to uh, Zoo Lighting. If you Google it, all of it comes up and you can see all of the things that James and the team do, how they do it and how you can be involved. And I encourage you to reach out to James if you're watching today and want to learn more about this subject, connect with James and the team. If you're an organisation, a company and a brand and you want to get on board with something that will become increasingly important, it won't diminish over time, please connect with Dr James and have a chat about the wonderful work that Zoo Lighting is doing across the globe. Dr. James Fisher, thank you so much for your time. It's an absolute pleasure. I look forward to what's next. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this, Tony. Thank you so much for the time and uh, you know the consideration in, in, in featuring us. So thank you. Thank you so much. It's my absolute pleasure. And that, my friends, is your lot for this week. Bye for now. everyone, I'm Tony Lontis and this is the Everyday Business Show. Is that possible? That was the question for myself. And it is absolutely possible.